everybody. I'm Alex Bartel, Walsh College's new Director of Alumni Engagement. Today with me in the awesome and new Walsh College Creator Lab, I have alumni Matt Shepard with me. Matt, thanks for joining. Good to, good to see you. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me into this. Yeah. Yeah, so Matt and I know each other uh, a little bit from some other activities, and we're going to take some time to delve into who Matt is, how we've met, and um, a few other things about Matt's alumni journey. So um, so let's start with who Matt is. Um, Matt, All what, right. what do you I'll, do for work? I'm Matt Shepard. Uh, currently what I do is I run a nurse call business called Soundcom System, uh, Rollins Soundcom Systems. Uh, we're a division of Amatech, which is a $5 billion uh, monster holding company, publicly traded. Uh, and then Rolland is the equipment manufacturer of the nurse call system. And Soundcom is the system integrator. So we take the uh, product and we actually put it into the hospitals, uh, make all those bells and whistles work. And uh, so that's, that's what the business is. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it's life safety equipment for hospital networks. We also have an education product that, uh, that goes into K through 12 school systems. Uh, again, life safety communication equipment. Uh, we like to say what we do matters because it is tied to student safety in the, uh, in the K through 12 market and then obviously hospital staff and uh, patient safety in the, uh, in the hospital systems. Nice. Uh, so we, uh, yeah, we, we have offices throughout Ohio and Michigan, so we cover that territory and install all the Rollin equipment there. Nice. So uh, that's that's what we do. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a fantastic organization to work for. Um, it's one of the best things about Amatech is it is from top down. It is the best of the best in leadership. Nice. They're uh, every one of their managers, everybody in the uh, you know they're they're out there fighting and driving, and they're uh, they're fantastic uh, examples of leadership and management. So yeah. it's a, it's a great environment to be a part of. So. Nice. Nice. And so, uh, specifically, I, I saw your title, and I want to make sure I get it right. So you are a business leader, and your yeah. function is uh, you're with PL. That's right. So I, I run. So basically, the business leader is the title. It's it's another title would be like a, a president or something to that effect. I run the entire business, and I'm responsible, fully responsible for the for the entirety of Soundcom as as an organization. Yeah. Now we are obviously the layers of management within Amatech. Uh, my boss, uh, Nardo. Uh, who is another fantastic example of Amatech leadership? Um, he comes. He's, he uh, runs the Florida uh, version of, of Soundcom, and it's called Rollenburg, Florida. Uh, and uh, they. Uh, so, you know, he, he's my direct boss. He's got many, many years in the healthcare industry and in, in this industry. So he's been a fantastic mentor to kind of bring me up to speed. I mean, I have the. The businessy side, but in terms of the healthcare industry and the education industry, I had no experience there. So, so I was learning, learning, yeah, matchup, learning from him yeah. has been extremely valuable. Um, so yeah, so the structure is, you know, he's he kind of sits on top of. We call ourselves a VAR or value added reseller. So if we're the ones that go in and install this. So he sits on top of of, uh, of that structure and reports directly into uh, Michelle, who. Uh, who is the BU manager for all of Rollins. So she's got the big manufacturing center out in Illinois. Nice. That's the squad right there. That's it. That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the dynamic. So we have a California operation as well, yeah. and there's a, lead, there's a version of me out there in California as well. So being a business leader, uh, president, whatever you want to call it, like really yeah. owning right, uh, Soundcom in that capacity, being responsible on the hook for your whole team and making sure that everybody's running as a humming drum. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's pressures, but also what are some things that you really enjoy about your role? Well, exactly that. I, uh, I like being involved, like being the decision maker, right? I'm responsible. And, and, and I, there's a, there's a couple books that I, that I subscribe to that I, that really kind of drive that home. One of them is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Uh, funny that we're on a podcast is what he does. <laughs> Jocko. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but I, him, that he got, he has two books that I really, really, uh, kind of adopted as a strong philosophy. Extreme Ownership is one of them. The, the title seems to kind of drive the point home there. And the other one is the dichotomy of leadership, right? It's building um, basically frontline generals, if you will, and, and commanders who can operate the business. So you got to develop the team. Yeah, you own it as the leader, but you've got to develop your team to also be in a position to to own it and and operate within your intuition, right? They, yeah. they should be as close to you and know your tendencies so well that they're making the decision you would have made 
in that situation. Yeah. So that, that's really what I like about what I do um, in terms of being in the, the, the business seat that I'm in. But from the passion of what we do, the product itself is very, very important to me. Uh, like I said, we, I, I used this tag earlier, but we, we, what we do matters because it's life safety equipment and it's stuff you see in your day-to-day -day life. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in the hospitals doing patient safety type activities. Well, you can touch and feel that stuff in your everyday life. In fact, when, uh, when my wife was giving birth to my children, it was our stuff hanging on the walls, right? And and I, I except yeah. oh, this yeah. is what it does. And so she, there she is going through labor, and I'm pointing all the operational stuff out on the wall. <laughs> this is what it does. Is, uh, yeah, thanks, hon. <laughs> why don't we why don't we deal with this? Got and, our kid. Don't worry. and then we'll talk later. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and then obviously in the school systems as well. I mean, I have, I have my kids are in school now, so it's like to to touch and see that, uh, and to know that your kids are kind of protected by a system that uh, that you put in is. Yeah. It's powerful, and yeah. and there's a lot of passion and, and drive in our in our organization as a result of that. I mean, it and and that's that's helpful when you're trying to run a business because you don't have to worry about the commitment of your team. Yeah, they're in, man. They're they're dialed in because they know what we're doing is so valuable to yeah. you know personally, professionally. It, it's successful. It's the right. It's it's a solid product, and it really you know it it touches your life one way or the other. So. Yeah. But no, I, I love that. So it's 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 fun to be a part of it. Um, so that's that's you know where where my passion is really coming from. But, yeah. But I like to run businesses. That's that's the yeah. career trajectory that I uh, that I wanted to get into, and that actually is why I got into Walsh. Yeah. Right? It was, so you're an MBA alum. I I was an MBA. Yes. And part of your decision making process was knowing that you wanted to run businesses. What are some applications? Uh, I mean, in your role that you've derived from your Walsh College experience, we go all the way back. All the so, way back. Uh, so I, I started out in accounting. I I, uh, I was uh, what what got me to Michigan was I, I joined uh, a accounting firm that's actually local here. It's uh, UHY Advisors, uh, working under now the CEO, but it was uh, he was a partner at the time, managing director, partner. He was uh, Steve McCarty. Really, really another. I, I've been blessed with strong leadership throughout my entire career. Um, so I, I was running around as an accountant out here and uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I got, UHY is a, a more of a middle market firm, which is, you know, I think a blessing in, in, in the sense that I got in with them because you get exposed to more in a middle market firm than you would into a big, big three or big four type firm. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's plenty of good things to say about a big three firm as well. But in the, in the middle market firms, you touch a lot more stuff. Um, and one of the things I got into was their uh, forensic litigation evaluation services, which was kind of like an M&A wing, uh, mergers and act type wing of the accounting firm. And that kind of really jump-started my interest in, I kind of want to run businesses. I want to do this kind of stuff. And Light not, really went off. And, yeah, and kind of get away from more of the traditional debits and credits of yeah. accounting. I also have a little bit different personality than most accountants, so uh, so it probably wasn't you know it was it was a great profession, and I and I have a lot of uh, uh, looking back, I really appreciate that I went down that road because it's done nothing but serve me in my in my career. Um, so I'm in this accounting frame, and I think Steve is actually a Walsh alum too, so um, you know, kind of a really natural fit. He I think he even might have recommended I look at it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was, uh, as an accountant, I needed a school that catered to um, the demands of an accounting profession because the accounting profession has that infamous tax season that just consume. <laughs> it's all consuming. And blackout, so blackout. It, it is. So to, yeah. to try and do an MBA with all of that on your plate, working 50 some hours a week, you know, running all over the place, you know, doing those, you know, doing the accounting side. Um, you need a school that caters to that, and that's what Walsh really does. I mean, you market to business, you you attract the business-minded student, and then you practice what you preach in the sense that you also align yourself as a business, like you're you're you run like a business, and you and you operate for the business person. And and I think most traditional schools can't do that. Yeah, they're they're operating on that semester struck you know structure, which. The quarters work for an accountant because you could do three quarters out of you know out of the out of a year, which is it was perfect. Uh, so yeah, so I I, I did the I, I got out of the uh, I, I didn't pursue the CP, the CPA uh, um, approach, which you know 
accounting firm, they want you to get that CPA. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, <laughs> it's a tough move there. But uh, and we were joking earlier, CPA stands for can't pass again. It's a, it's a tough, that's a tough uh, test to take. So uh, yeah, the MBA um, opened a lot of doors. It, uh, it provided the credentials f that I needed um, to get into the world of consulting. So uh, while I was running around as an accountant, I actually helped my dad start his own consulting firm. And upon completing my MBA, I felt that I finally had the credentials now to join him and join him productively, right? I mean, he, he could have carried me along, right? right? right. But I didn't want to go down that road. I wanted to actually be able to add value your to the business. To table, yeah, yeah, yeah. More than just free bookkeeper, which is what I was. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I got into the consulting racket after completing my MBA. And uh, again, it was a lot of the things I learned through, you know, Walsh provides a lot of uh, cool classes that really catered to that. Um, you know, the, the valuation type, type classes that were cool. And then um, there, was, there was a couple others that I, was, I had on the tip of my tongue and now I've lost them. Um, but you know, it's an MBA. It's 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 business. It's management, and that's what we were consulting. We were lean consultants, lean yeah. process improvement consultants. Uh, so did that for five years. We went we went everywhere. We were all over the country. We we got an opportunity to go uh, overseas, uh, which was fun. We did uh, Singapore and Malaysia. Did a project out there, and it was really an awesome experience. You know, working with your dad, and you know, right. trying to you know learn learn how to you know. I, I saw some of the best and some of the worst. In terms of management out there, and uh, and it was it was a lot of fun, but we went the way of the entrepreneur. And five years, we kind of just could not hit that tipping point, and so I I branched off, and uh, and he's still he's still trying to do it. Uh, he's he's awesome at it, but uh, but I got into uh, got into some other stuff. I was running a, a business in uh, back in Pittsburgh um, that did uh, HVAC controls. So uh, they uh, basically, in a commercial space, even such as this, you have uh, all these controls that control the airflow uh, for your heating and air conditioning. And basically, we, we built the, the, the controllers that did that. And then um, there was an opportunity. We, uh, we, we basically went after a mergers and acquisition maneuver that I led uh, to get into the retail market space. So if you think of a, a standard retail store like a Dollar Tree, be a perfect example, uh, they look the same. No matter where they are, they look exactly the same. So once you get one, you get all of the, the system is the exact same. So you can just stamp that right. out in every facility they build, and they're building 800 of That's these awesome. all over the year. So, yeah. so we, we got in there. We did this acquisition. It happened to be in, um, in New Hampshire area. And... Uh, it was pretty clear they were going to relocate me to, <laughs> to New Hampshire, and I had a new family at the time, and it just wasn't wasn't the right move. So I uh, I found my way into Amatech, and uh, and they liked me um, from they called me a purple unicorn, and uh, I don't know if that I don't know if that fits or not, but uh, because they were looking for an operations guy who had an accounting background, right. so apparently that's rare. Yep. Just um, but but here I, I think I have to imagine that that's. Every Walsh, you know, a lot of the Walsh students are, are that. So, yeah. um, so it's obviously something that uh, businesses are demanding. They they want that type of mindset to have the both the way to you know know how to run a business and then also have the financial acumen to kind of back up and know how that translates. Absolutely. So, I'm sure you being, you know, that that hybrid mind. I mean, uh, I, I think we have so many students that. Uh, come to us or are developed here on an array of a spectrum. So whether they have work experience or they don't have a work experience, because it sounds like um, when you started with UHY, right, you had a great view into that mid-market accounting and, you know, you really started to understand how to apply. Like, and, and I just want to back up a little bit. Were there, like, if you're looking back at young Matt and what were some of those, like, give me three characteristics that you're like, okay, was it, was it grit, persistence? Like, what was it that you feel like outside of education that really helped you apply yourself with uh, Walsh education? Uh, oh, man, good question. Uh, young Matt was an idiot, so uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really tough to think about that. But, I mean, it was the, the getting into the accounting background instantly professionalizes you, right? We're running around in suits and ties. We weren't in, you know, business casual clothes. And, and so where a lot of my, you know, colleagues and friends, more my friends, like from back home, they weren't in careers yet. Yeah. Right, they were in jobs, right? Whatever they could get out of college. I immediately came into a career type mindset. So, 
I think that helped, and and you know, so so you're kind of thrust into a you know more of a career mind. You're you're almost forced to mature um, faster because you're you're in a career now and you're handling you know accounts that are relatively large. It's serious. I mean, accounting's and it really shaped your kind of perspective. Correct, and and yeah. so and then you get into so then you're looking for if you want to go an MBA, right? You're looking for you know what is that what, what's that MBA going to be like? You know, you, you have I, I had a a uh, more traditional undergrad uh, at a school I went to. And, and so I was like, I don't want that because I think we were talking earlier, like a lot of these schools, they're, they're football teams with an academic racket. So, so you, I was looking for more of a, of a school that was oriented around more of a pro professional, more mature mindset. And, uh, and so that's kind of what drove me there. Um, and, and honestly, the MBA has opened more doors for me than, than I care to admit. I mean, it really is a credential that has a lot of weight still to it, and it, and it's ex it was extremely valuable to get. Um, and so in pursuit of that, it was like find a, I was looking for a school that was a little less nonsense. You know, I was a working adult at this time. I wasn't partying my way through my undergrad yeah. Like, yeah. like I would say the traditional <laughs> student would be, um, where Walsh is definitely um, very professional and very business-minded, and, and that's, that was attractive to me at that time. Uh, yeah. Because that's what I, I was. I was as an accountant. I was dialed in that way. I was. I was. In, I was interfacing with customers. I was. You know, and uh, looking professional, talking professional. Uh, so you know, it, it kind of just aligned itself with uh, with this school, and and it was again. It's been a uh, tremendous asset for me to have. Yeah. No, I love that. And so. I know, uh, just rounding back to talking about younger Matt, because I'm sure there's there's uh, many younger Matts out there, <laughs> and they're still they'll probably be watching this, and they're gonna think like how, like I love that Matt started in accounting and he got into running a business or running businesses, because I'm I'm sure like it's very popularized today where running a business sounds great, but we don't talk about the ugly parts either. So from your perspective, if you were to give uh, younger Matt some advice on doing what you do now. Well, it's it's Jump definitely in. a grind. There, you know. So, so <laughs> the funny story. I'll I'll actually tell this. Yeah. Uh, so I went and pursued a double major in finance and accounting at my undergrad school, and I did that. I chose that because at the time, the because <laughs> you like pain. Well, the, well, <laughs> sure. The masochist. The uh, all of the CEOs mm -hmm. were either finance or accounting backgrounds at that time. So it's like, ah, I'll get both. Well, I don't know if you know this, Alex, but uh, they don't hire CEOs right out of college. <laughs> so, uh, so it was uh, earning your stripes and and paying the dues, and and that's uh, that's what really is the grind. And continuing to fight forward. I mean, a lot of that sounds a little cliche, but it's always driving forward. You're you're never done learning, and. And even after, like, it's not like, oh, I got my undergrad. Now I'm ready to take on the world. Now I got my MBA. Now I'm ready to take on. You're never ready, number one. And number two, you're always in constant motion. You're always, you're always constantly learning, constantly developing, constantly growing. Um, one of the best ways to do that is to keep expert counsel. So everywhere I've ever been, I maintain very close relations with, um, with the talented people around me. And, and the nice thing about Amatech is there's a whole bunch of those guys. Right. Uh, so I'm really able to, to grow within the Amatech world but, and with the Amatech sphere. But that, that really brings us to what you know, we've been doing with, with WAM. And it really you know, plays nicely with, with this topic because what we do with, with uh, our, our mastermind program, our alumni mastermind program, is we basically put all of these goal-minded you know, ex, you know, just fantastic professionals in one room, and we solve problems together. Real and, time, and and it's <laughs> it's that expert counsel group where we're we're talking about, hey, what's what's going on in your world right now, and the perspectives because everybody's got some different influence, some different perspective that they've experienced going on through their, their other career, and uh, and and now we're basically sharing these ideas in, in real time and, and solving, you know, solving a lot of problems. I mean, there's some talent in that room. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and it's exciting to kind of be around those people. I, I, every time we do these things, I walk away with something valuable. Yeah. Uh, so Whether it's a book, it's an experience. Like, I mean, I, like we were, so in these past few, uh, 
sessions we've had, we do this on a bi-monthly uh, basis every other month, um, they've been really skyrocketing. We've been able to uh, apply a lot of concepts and cross-collaborate. Uh, you know, we don't want to shout out too many names because we, 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 we well, definitely gonna, have a good time in the group. You have to bring them into these, uh, these podcasts. I know. Uh, we'll talk about them. Yeah, so, yeah, the, uh, the mastermind is, is absolutely great. And uh, a question I have for you that I think um, – some other prospective members have had, and I just, just bring it to light because we're here on the podcast, is um, do you think diversity in that group helps you? Because they don't necessarily come from an Amatech background, or maybe oh, they're sure. even small mom pop, or even some that are on the larger scale. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, we've got a we've got every different industry. We've got every different uh, profession. It, it is a mixed bag. I mean, we've got, you know, there's, I, I don't think there's any duplicate professions. Right. in in that uh, in that room so again back to the perspectives it's like what we're talking about it could be any topic I mean um, you know and and so we got we got some sales guys so they're bringing sales perspectives we got HR personnel they're bringing HR person you know perspectives we've got like you said a mom and pop uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll name drop them we got Pierre out yep, there who's, yep. <laughs> who's running an HVAC company and it's like he's got his own set of, of you know different problems and they're they're cross pollinating between HR and 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 business ops and yeah. and so yeah there's there's I, I would say that the diversity of thought is extremely valuable yeah. in in that room and keeps and it pretty fresh it huh? does and 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 again the the other thing that the binding agent there is obviously our alumni status with Walsh so um, it's it's a really it's it's a fantastic group to be a part of and uh, again it, it's it's that expert counsel. Um, opportunity that you know back to the to the advice you could give to anybody is is find those mentors and and they don't have to be a, it doesn't have to be this formal mentor relationship where oh you're my mentor no it's it's who are the people that are inspiring you who are the people who are that are doing the things that you want to do what are they doing why are they doing it how are they doing it and talking to them and keeping them in your in your center of influence because yeah. they'll make you better, right? You are the company you keep in a lot of respects. So if you're if you're surrounding yourself with some of the best minds, you know, in whatever industry, then you're in that kind of you're in good company. Yeah. And and you should take it, you know, you should you should use that to your advantage. Yeah. Leverage those resources Absolutely. around you, right? Absolutely. So that's that's a big component. And 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 throughout my career, it's like I still keep in very close contact with with all of my, you know, former bosses, managers, leaders, whoever I was associated with. They're all, you know, expert counsel in my opinion. So we, I stay close to them, and and I've had some great ones. I, you know, my my first uh, spot with Land, with Amatech Land, I, I had one of the best business leaders in the organization, uh, Justin Smith. He was, he's out. Uh, he's a UK guy actually, so he's out in the UK, and uh, uh, he was probably the best uh, leader I could have had coming into Amatech as a new corporate. Amatech guy, um, and then now, like I said, my leadership team within within the Rollin organization and the and uh, and the integrators uh, like Nardo and, and Michelle, they're fantastic as well. But yeah. but all the way up the chain in Amatech, I mean it's it's an it's an exciting place to be if you are a high motivated, you know, success driven type person because it's you know they reward that obviously they they like to say that they want. Uh, they want workhorses, not show ponies. <laughs> so you're in there, you're grinding, and you're yeah. fighting. But that's the entire that's the yeah. entire every business unit in their massive pantheon of organizations. Um, right. That's what they are. And so I feel like I'm in a great place because uh, that's that's what they want, and that's what I want to be. So I'm surrounding myself again with with that type of motivation. I love that. It's like you want to be there, right? Yeah. Like there yeah. are the folks that are there are there want to be there, right? And and that's I mean again. Our products help. We're our, we're niche products, right? The stuff that we do is is exciting niche technology. So it's uh, it's a it's a it's kind of a part of the package, I guess. Yeah. Within that organization, so. No, oh, that's wonderful, Matt. And and I just want to really quickly compliment that uh, you know your positivity throughout, uh, you know, expressing your journey not only here on the podcast but even outward. And I just want to give that highlight right there because I, I don't think a lot of people acknowledge. Uh, attitude yeah right? like because it really does like how you carry yourself and in professional settings personal settings um, and it transfers over in how you translate as a leader right uh, and how you deliver and results how do you maintain that positivity well I I don't know I uh, 
<laughs> my critics might say it borders on arrogance, but uh, <laughs> what I always like to say is uh, no one is going to really believe in you, so you better believe in you, right? That's a quote, um, Tara. That's a quote. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, yeah, we can use that one. Uh, for the thumbnail there, but uh, that that has really hit home to me. And it, and and where I got that, how I learned that was utter failure. Um, I was a huge baseball guy, and uh, and what I, of course, hindsight never misses. You're 2020 with hindsight, but while I was playing baseball, I was one of those guys who was not the optimist, not the the you know. I was one thing would go wrong and. Then another, and then another, and another uh, quicksand, they call that in the sport world, right? That's kind of what I was. And, um, and it took me looking back and realizing that when I was believing in myself, when I was up and bordering on that arrogant line, I played better. I did better. Things went well. And when I was trying to, you know, when I was insecure or self-conscious, things went really badly. And they continued to spiral out of control. And it was reflection that kind of made me realize that, yeah, no, it's you got to believe in yourself and you've got to you've got to own it and you've got to continue to push yourself and drive yourself forward. And again, if you want it, no one is going to hand it to you. Right. You're going to have to grind it and you're going to have to, again, believe you can do it because there's everybody's looking for the reason why not to do it for you, why not to give it to you. So you've got to make you've got to put yourself in that position to be successful and drive for it. It's not going to happen overnight. And, you know, the young Matt uh, would have probably <laughs> never believed I'd even be where I am today. Yeah. And I still feel like I've got places to go, right? I've got more growth and more more opportunity out there to continue to, to deliver and drive. And, and it's, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, age and wisdom, I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> pushing closer to 40 than I am, uh, you know, the, the 20s. And so it's... Uh, looking back and, and, you know, family moves you forward too. Um, my wife is a big driver in my life. Uh, she's fantastic driver or, you know, kicking me, maybe, you know, pushing <laughs> me harder than, than one would like with but, love, with, with love. love, with all love. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, and then just to be, you know, um, you know, that leader for the family and leader for my kids, I have, uh, four boys. It's a little frat house. My <laughs> wife is completely uh, surrounded. So, uh, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's a lot of my drivers. I love that, Matt. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much for sharing. All right, so I think we're coming to a close. If there's anything that uh, the Walsh College Network can help you with, please let us know. Yeah. So what what I my advice or my, what I would what I would like to see more with the alumni is is more opportunities for this type of like WAM engagement. Uh, that that to me is is really really valuable um, for the alums, and it it brings us back, right? I mean, I was kind of looking for a way to kind of get back in, but it gives a, a platform. To, for the for this you know for you know valuable alumni who are out there taking over the world right they got their their Walsh degrees and and now they're out there taking over the world bring them back in and and give them some value right the value is sharing the ideas with the team and and I think it you know it it kind of brings us back home if you will to yeah. to Walsh and and I think there's a lot of value in that it's fun it's uh, it's interesting and uh, and uh, it gives us uh, you know, a lot of value in terms of discussing ideas that we may not do otherwise, right? And so um, it's, I think that's probably one of the best things I think Walsh has got going. Other than this, this is fantastic too, this yeah. uh, podcast series. So yeah. I, hope, I hope I can come back sometime and, and do another. Absolutely. So. No, this was great. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Absolutely.